And so, hey, this is the rush freestyle, the simple rush freestyle. The reason I call it simple is because, you know, it works for every lead type. It works for face-to-face, -face, works for telesales, works for Zoom sales, and any lead you want. Okay. Now, I'm always constantly updating this, this script. It's always going to get better. So keep coming back every week and printing out the newest version. This is the latest version we have. It's been updated from a month ago and it's getting even better. So I'm about to break this down for you guys. It's going to get pretty exciting. Let me go over this with you real quick. Okay. So we go to the fflrush.com website. We go to training links. We go to scripts and forms. And then we go to the rush freestyle. That's how you guys find it. It's right there. All right, so we're going to zoom into this thing, and I'm going to go over this with you guys real quick. If you guys have any questions, Eric, you just let me know. We're going to learn this thing together. Okay, so first up is just breaking down all this stuff. When I call it freestyle, it means that if for some reason you're not comfortable saying something, then you don't have to use it. The key to this is being comfortable and confident with the way that you're talking to your clients. So be, feel free to like change some of these things up if you want to, but the key is you need to get really good at this script. If you don't sound confident when you're reading the script, well, you're not going to make any money. Okay. So the first step is whether it takes you 20, 30 hours, whatever the case may be, you need to be saying this script without looking at it. So what I recommend you do to practice is you read a paragraph, then you pull the, the piece of paper away and you try to say that paragraph without looking at it. Okay. Then you read the paragraph again, try to say it without looking at it, read it again, say it without looking at it. Then you move on to your second paragraph. Try to say it, look at it, read it, say it without looking at it. Get to the point to where you don't need the script because what's happening is you're sounding like you're sounding like you need a script. And then that makes you sound like a robot, makes you sound nervous. You know, you, it, you're using it as a crutch, right? You shouldn't be using your script as a crutch. You should know this thing in and out and sound professional. Okay. So I'm gonna kind of go through this. And we'll kind of break this down and give some psychology of why stuff's written there. Um, so, hey, hey, Eric. So, hey, Eric, this is Ryan. Hey, I'm, not, I'm a medical field underwriter. It's been assigned to you to go over some uh, final expense information you requested. Um, a while back, it looks like you fill out a form online that talks about leaving your family some tax free money if you pass away. So, you can kind of see as I was reading it, I said money instead of income. You want to be reading this thing kind of loosely, right? So, you're using your own verbiage. And you can kind of, and every time you do your presentation, it might change a little bit. Here's a second version, right? You can use this second line if you want it to be a little bit quicker. Maybe, maybe you like it simpler, right? You know, hey, Eric, I'm calling you about that uh, final expense information you requested. A while back, looks like you filled out a mailer that talks about leaving your family some tax free income if you pass away. See, so different version. It's about sounding confident. Both versions work, right? If you're brand new, you might want to use this line. You know, I'm not a telemarketer, so they know right away that you're not. You might sound like a telemarketer if you haven't practiced this enough. So practice this thing and be a professional. Treat this job as a professional. Most of you guys came here because you wanted to protect 20, 30, 40 families a month, but yet you're still using your script. And without it, you couldn't even do a presentation. That's silly, right? We need to be showing up to the plate like we know our, we know this like the back of our hand. You're right. It, it spend 40 hours on it. Spend, spend 80 hours on getting your presentation down. Know all your rebuttals, right? You got to go to college first. You got to go to class before you stop, start working. That's why you're failing. You haven't done enough studying. You don't know your presentation like the back of your hand. So you sound like you don't know it. Why, why would a client trust you on the phone when you sound like you're reading from a script? I would hang up on you too. Like, you know, you're, you're trying to protect my family and you haven't even taken your business serious enough to know your script. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to buy a policy from you, right? Is that making sense, Eric? Perfect. You can take yourself off mute. It's just me and you. Cool, man. So let's try another version, right? You know, hey, Eric, this is Ryan. Hey, I'm not a telemarketer. You know, I'm actually the medical uh, field underwriter that's been assigned to you to get you some of that uh, life insurance information that you requested. Um, looks like a while back, you filled out a form online that talks about leaving your family some tax-free income, you know, if you pass away. Um, if you want to just, you need to verify some quick info real quick. It looks like I have your address is 240 East um, Jackson Road, and it looks like your age is 54. You got that right? That's correct. Perfect. So that's another version. Maybe we'll try it one more time. 
Yo, hey, John, this is uh, Ryan. I'm actually the medical field underwriter that was been, been assigned to your case um, on some final expense information. Looks like you requested a while back. Looks like you filled out a mailer that talked about uh, leaving your family some tax free income if you pass away. OK, so I just need to verify a couple quick things here. Looks like I got your address as 123 Main Street. And it uh, looks like your birthday is 12, 17, 54. We got that right? That's right. Okay. So what do you think of all those versions? Were, were, was one better than the other? I don't think so. I think it's all confidence, how you say it. Correct. Right. So what happens is we focus so much on the words and it's really saying the words in a professional way. I sound professional, no matter how I talk about it. Right. So that's why they trust me. So what happens is we get caught up so much on the words but it's really about reading it in a professional way and being comfortable with it. And that's going to take some time. You know, once you've, once you've done it, you know, a lot of agents, what they do is they start off with a script and then they're, they're reading that live with clients and constantly messing up, right. And not making any sales and they get comfortable with that. And they just want to keep saying those same lines over and over again. Right. But you can do that before you pick up the phone at all and practice this out loud by yourself. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay, perfect. So the verify info. So you're just verifying some info, proving that you have some information that makes them trust you. Um, grab a pen and paper. We're taking care of this now. Let me know when you're ready. Now, this is a direct statement. I'm not asking them, hey, can you grab a pen and paper? I'm ordering them to, right? So you got to be assertive. Hey, you know, this sounds way worse. You know, hey, can you grab a pen and paper right now? Actually, I can't, right? Hey, grab a pen and paper. We're going to go ahead and take care of this right now. Let me know when you're ready. While they're grabbing the piece of paper, you're going to text them your credentials. So as soon as you say that, you're texting them your credentials. Okay. Now, I don't want you to say, hey, you know, um, I want to verify. Uh, I'm sending you my information so you can verify me. I used to say that. And I thought about it logically. If I'm saying so you can verify me, that means that a lot of other clients also did not trust me. And that's why I'm putting that line in there. So it makes them question if they should trust me too, right? That's basically what it's saying. So does that make sense, Eric? Yeah, that makes sense. Absolutely. I mean, which one what, Which one do you think would trigger you more to not trust me? If I'm like, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and text you my information so you can verify me. There's actually a link there that goes to the Department of Insurance. So if you wanna click that, you can put in my information, you'll see who I am, okay? So do you like that version better or do you like this version better? Okay. Hey, um, I just go ahead. I just went ahead and text you my credentials. Let me know that you received those. Did you get those, Eric? Yeah, I got those. All right. Perfect. So I'm actually the medical field underwriter. It's kind of like a national broker. What I do is shop every A rated company nationwide. So which one do you think you, you liked better? Which one's going to build more trust? Probably just like not briefly going over it, but just kind of like no one's ever make, made a big deal about this. I don't need a line about it, but they have it anyways. I've sent my credentials over. I'm not calling, not asking to verify anything because no one's ever asked me that before. So if they do bring it up, I'm going to be confused. Like, wait, what? Okay. I mean, you have my credentials. Go ahead and look it up. If that's what you need to, you're the only person that's ever done that, but yeah, go ahead. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Was, it, was the second version better or the first one? I mean, which one do you think would cause more people to be alarmed and kind of freaked out? Yeah, I like the first one, you know, where you're just, it's more clean. It's just you mean the, sec the second one, right? Yeah, the second one. The Is that one what you're talking where about? you just say, hey, I texted you my credentials. Did you receive them? Right. You know, so it's simpler to the point. So less is more because we're keeping it simple. We're confident, right? So we're always assertive, like, you know, hey, everyone buys a policy. So yeah, just text you my credentials. Let me know you receive those. All right, perfect. So hey, I'm the medical field underwriter. It's kind of like a national broker but basically allows me to shop every A-rated company nationwide. And I basically just look for the lowest cost. So what I'll do today is ask you some medical questions and then based off your age and health, that's gonna tell me what you can qualify for. Now, I'm sure you're probably already aware of this, but as we get older, it gets more expensive, right? Or another way of looking at it is this is the lowest cost right now. Is that making sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Perfect, so that's how you do that line, okay? And then for me, this is so simple, Eric. So you can play along with this, okay? So, you know, did you fill out that form for new coverage or, or to add some additional coverage? I'm looking to add some additional coverage. 
Perfect. Well, I'm glad you have some coverage in place. I'm guessing the reason why you're trying to add it is because we know it gets more expensive and you want to get it right now while it's on sale, right? Yeah. See what I just did there? I'm assuming stuff, right? And so this line is great because we're not asking them if they want coverage or not. We're making it obvious that you should have coverage, right? Because you fill out the form for new coverage or to add on additional coverage. This, the psychology of this line says that every single one buys a policy. So again, we're not calling them to ask them, do you want a policy or not? We're something that every single person that makes a call always buys a policy, okay? Now, who are you trying to protect, Eric? My wife. Okay, and then what's your wife's name? Chelsea. Now, it's really important that once you get that name, Chelsea, you're always gonna use Chelsea because that causes an emotional response, right? So you don't wanna ever just go, you know, you know, it, you know, ask questions and say your wife, use Chelsea. Chelsea's more personal. We have to bring out emotions, okay? Gotcha, Eric. Now, it is required to have your spouse on the call, so go grab, go grab Chelsea, okay? Okay. So now where a lot of agents mess up on this part is they go, hey, you know, it, I think it's a good idea to have your wife on the phone. Can you go grab her? You're asking a question. They're going to say, no, it's okay. And give you a rebuttal. You can just give the information to me. So don't ask a question. Give a statement. You're in charge. You're the professional. You're doing your job. You're in a hurry. It is required to have your spouse on the call. So go grab Chelsea. Right? It's assertive. You're to the point. Okay, there's no, it's not a question. You're telling them what they need to do, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, once Chelsea's here, we're going to pretend like she's not here so we can speed it up. But um, ask the questions of both of them, right? To both the husband and the wife. All right. So, you know, Eric, you know, if you died yesterday, how would that affect Chelsea today? Yeah, she'd be in a tough spot. She'd be in a tough spot. Okay. And then Chelsea. If you died yesterday, how would that affect Eric? Um, he would, you know, he'd be in a tough spot too. Um, not See, quite so, as, as hard as, as me. He he earns a lot of the income, but um, gotcha. It's hard on both of us. Now, what what we're doing is making him think. You know, hey, you're not here today. You can even again freestyle this in a better way if you wanted to. You know, hey, so let's just say, um, Eric. You know, yesterday you got in a car crash, right? So you're not alive today. You know, how's that going to affect Chelsea? You know, what she, what's, what's going to happen if, if that does happen, right? Uh -huh. So you can, you can add lip, right? You can remember to freestyle, paint the picture for them. It's an emotional response. We have to let them think about what would happen. And now we're saying, what's your plan right now, right? So Eric, what's your plan now? You know, if you weren't here, what's your plan? What do you have in place? Yeah, we, we have a little bit of coverage through work, uh, but that's why we're talking is um, I want to put okay. something in place. Yeah, and work plans, you know, we don't consider those because they're rental plans. And, you know, I've talked to too many widows to where the husband got cancer, right? And then because they got cancer, they weren't working anymore. The income stopped. And guess what? When you have cancer, do you think you can get a plan anymore? No, you can't. Right. So the key is you got to get it while you're healthy and younger. OK, so that's why we're talking today to make sure we get a plan in place. Right. Yes. OK, now, if they're younger than 50, you want to ask all these questions. So how much income, you know, is is uh, Chelsea going to be losing? If something happens to you, she'll lose about 70. $70,000. Wow. If I lost $70,000 today. That would suck. I'm guessing she'd be kind of in the, the same position. That's going to make her really struggle, right, Eric? Yeah, she'd be in a hard, hard spot. Okay. And then what if you, what if you got cancer, you know, and you couldn't work anymore? You know, what's, what's your plan right now? What would you do? Yeah, I haven't really thought about that. Um, we, I guess we don't have a plan in place right now. Yeah, because if you get cancer, guess what? If you're not showing up to work because you're getting chemo, that work policy is not in effect. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. Now, let's just say you got disabled, right? You know, let's say you had a bad car accident. Maybe you're snowboarding or rock climbing, whatever the case may be. You break your legs, right? You, you, you obviously can't go to work anymore. You know, you're, you're stuck with a leg cast or something. You get disabled, okay? What's your plan for that right now? 
Yeah, besides collecting disability, hopefully, um, we don't. So, yeah, there's a place right so, now. So your work has some disability right now, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, through oh. work, I would hope to be able to collect disability, but I don't. it's only a percentage. It's probably not enough. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, so, you know, the, the stuff through your work, um, you know, a lot of times the work policies have it built in where you have to be injured on the job sometimes. And so like, if you were out you know, doing your own thing, it's not going to pay out. So again, you know, it's, it's not, it's good to have your, have all your bases covered. Cause we're talking about the unknown. We're ensuring that Chelsea's going to be okay. Right. Cause she obviously is the person you love most in your life. Right. That's right. Okay. So we want to make sure we have a plan a, which is living forever being a millionaire, you know, having a nice big house, whatever the case may be. But we also have a plan B in place to make sure that anything goes wrong, you know, where you can't, you get disabled, you get cancer, you die, whatever the case may be, all those plan A's can still happen. You can still have money for a nice big house, you know, retire, all that good stuff. That's kind of what we're talking about today. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. And then just out of curiosity, you know, if we do find something in your budget, why is this important to have in place for Chelsea? Well, I, I don't want her to lose the house. You know, I don't want her to struggle with the kids financially. Um, you know, I want to make sure she's taken care of, you know, God forbid something happens. Okay. And then see what I'm doing. These questions are all leading you to make it to be an obvious reason why you should have something in place. Right. So that's why these, these need questions are, are written very well. Right. And if you use them correctly and sometimes when you when you when you're freestyling, if you feel like they're getting a little irritated by you asking so many questions, you know, or then move on. Right. You don't have to ask every single one. It's a freestyle. So you got to kind of feel it out. They're like, oh, I get it already. What's the price? Right. Maybe you got to move on a little bit quicker. Right. But these are all great questions. Now, now, Eric, is there any reason why you wouldn't want to protect Chelsea with a plan? No, as long as I can fit it in my budget. Gotcha. Okay. So as long as we're in the budget, it, and we, then it would kind of make sense, right? Yeah. Okay. So what I did just there is now it's sold, right? The policy is now sold. Okay. So, you know, it, you're, this is the part where you're selling it. It should be sold up front right? Not when you give the options at the end and now you're trying to sell it and convince them you're selling it up front. Now with these questions, do you feel like Eric, that I kind of set it up pretty well, that it's obvious that you should have something in place? Yeah. I like that a lot. There you go. So that's why I want you to practice this script. Like your life depends on it. You need to be able to say these questions. So take this paragraph, read all the questions and try to say them without looking at it. Then look at it again, say that looking. If it takes you an hour to memorize it, then it takes you an hour. But we have to do our homework to be successful at this. Otherwise, literally, you should quit and go work for Uber or something else, right? It's not going to work. Okay. We need to get a light on your face, by the way. You're nice and dark over there. <laughs> you're like the dark knight. That's how <laughs> I like it. You're the dark knight. <laughs> All right. <coughs> All right. So reconfirm. This is showing you that you care, You're, that you were listening, that you care about them, right? And embellish what they talk about. So let me give you some examples on embellishing. All right, so correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like what you're saying is you're a good father. You got two kids, you're a good husband. You know that if you can't go to work because you're disabled, got cancer, that losing 70K is gonna put your wife in a really tough spot. And obviously your kid's life livelihood is gonna change as well. And do I have that right? And so we're trying to kind of put this in place to prevent that from happening, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like what you're saying is, you know, hey, when you pass away, you don't want your family doing car washes, doing GoFundMes, that you want to be a responsible, you know, adult for your kids and say, hey, I took care of any expenses. I want to make sure I'm covering the flights out to the funeral. I'm making sure there's zero out-of-pocket costs because when your father passed away, your family had to pay for those expenses. And on top of the loss of losing your dad, it was also very stressful financially. And you want to make sure that doesn't happen. Do I have that right? Yeah, you do. Okay. 
Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like what you're saying is you're, you're a great mom, right? You have two young daughters, you're a single mom, and you know that you want them to have a good life, just like I do for my son, you know, being a great dad. And you want to make sure that if you pass away, they have money to go to college and live a good life, you know, obviously without their mom. Do I have that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. So you're always embellishing this with some stories. So those are three examples of how you can embellish and talk about it in a better way that makes it obvious. Okay. Um, and yeah, I mean, and this is kind of a generic part. You can say it a couple of different ways. You know, this really is the last I love you that you leave the, for the people you care about most, you know, do you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's, this really is you know, the last I love you that you leave for the people who care about most. I mean, I'm glad I have one in place, you know, for myself. Do you agree? I agree. Okay. So if you want to use that line, use it. If you don't, don't, but I think it's a really good line. What do you think of it, Eric? Yeah. I like that. Just to read. Yeah. yeah. Just like, you know, I really just, I personally feel like this is really the last I love you that you leave for the people who care about most. And, and obviously the person I care about most is my son. So you know, I'm glad I got a proof one. I'm glad I have one in place. You know, would you agree with that or? Okay. Absolutely. So, so why am I able to say this in three different ways? Because I practiced it. So the whole point of you memorizing this thing is because each client, you might say your words a little bit differently based on their personalities and stuff. I just said it three different ways. So you don't want to be using this as a script. This is a guide for you to memorize it. That's it to memorize it. And then once you have it memorized, you're using as a reference point of what to talk about. Okay. Is that making sense? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Um, so this is so important. This is going to double or triple your return on investment. If you're not doing this correctly, you are literally shooting yourself in the head. Like you need to get good at this. So, you know, Hey, how long have you been out in the area for Eric? Uh, I've been out here for about five years. Perfect. And I know I couldn't fit it in right here, but the whole script below, I typed it up. So check this out. We're going to go down to the needs analysis. This is where we get our free leads. I'm going to get really good at this and do this every single time. You should be able to get one to four different leads every single time. So you can scroll down to this, memorize this. Okay. So, hey, how, how long have you been in the area for? Yeah, about five years. Oh, nice. You have family nearby? Yeah, I do. Yeah, my oh, cool, family cool. or my parents live here. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I got uh, two brothers and sisters. Uh, I actually got two brothers up north. They're about two hours from me. How many brothers and sisters do you have? Uh, two sisters and one brother. Oh, that's awesome. Who, who's your favorite out of the kids, uh, the siblings? Oh, my, uh, my kids love my brother the most. He's the most fun, so they gravitate towards him. So I'm writing it down, two sisters, one brother. That's three leads that I can get now. Okay, nice. So I'm always adding in some stuff right here, like, you know, to kind of soften the blow. It kind of, it's kind of awkward from like, do you have family by? Oh, how many brothers and sisters? Yeah, right. It sounds kind of weird. So I always talk about myself a little bit. I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah, I got two brothers that live a little bit close by. I can see them every once in a while. How many brothers and sisters do you have? See how it seems kind of a little more flowing. Okay. Oh, nice. Uh, how about parents? Are they still alive? Yeah, my parents are retired and they're still healthy and enjoying life. So that's a good thing. Good, good. And, and some people go, that's kind of messed up to ask if they're alive. Well, guess what? We're talking about life insurance. Of course, I want to ask that question. I want them to think about that. Okay. Um, all right. Hey, Valerie, I'm recording something. Can you please? Um, all right. Sorry to get my assistant out of here. <laughs> all right. So awesome. So the parents are still alive. Great. Now I have five leads, two sisters, one brother, a mom and a dad. Okay. Now I'm going to find even more. All right. Nice. What do you do for work out there? I'm in construction. Oh, cool. Cool. You like it? Yeah. Yeah. I've been nice. doing it for a while. Nice. So you kind of more of like a handyman, like do you work by yourself or do you work with people? No, I usually work with a group. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I got I got some coworkers I work with over here that, man, I just can't stand. But, you know, there's this one guy that, that I actually go to lunch with all the time. His name's Jerry. He's kind of like my buddy. Do you have like a favorite one that you like to work with? 
Yeah, I have, uh, you know, one guy that we're usually uh, paired up together. We work pretty well together. His name's Derek. Derek? Nice. You guys get to go on lunch breaks together and stuff? Yeah. Yep. That's always good, too. You know, those lunch breaks when you're with your buddies, get away from the family. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, steal a little beer or something like that at lunch, right? <laughs> or, oh, you know, yeah, a drinker. Absolutely. Nice. I like it. I like it. Cool. So I, when you're not working out there and, um, you know, when you're not working out there, what, what do you do for fun? Uh, I pretty much just chase my kids around. Chase yeah, kids around? Kids. Uh, gotcha. So just more of a family up. man, huh? Yeah, do you ever do you ever have any people over for like you know barbecue and stuff like that? Like any friends with some kids? Yeah, absolutely. Yep, get together. I'm guessing that's with Derek, right? Yeah, yeah, we hang out once in a while outside of work too. Cool, cool, man. Who's who's your best friend? I got a guy um, that I hang out with with my kids. Uh, his name's Zach, and we usually get the kids together, and then we have they kind of play, and we get we get to kind of have some adult time. You know what I mean? Do you have oh, any buddies I- like that? Yeah, um, my best friend, uh, Mike, he was the best man at my wedding. Uh, he actually had the whole family stay over at his house overnight. So we, when the kids went to sleep, we could kind of hang out and have some adult time. Nice. That's awesome. So what I did there now, that was a, that's a little lengthy. Okay. And then I would relate to them. I'd say, oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. I like to get, get the barbecue together too, or you know, whatever we did for fun, maybe they said golf, you know, I'm a terrible golfer. I need to get out there and actually practice some more. So you just find something to relate to them. So this needs to sound natural, right? The first couple of times you do it, it's going to sound a little, you know, weird, right? But the more you practice it, the easier it's going to get. If you feel like it's going too long, then, you know, shorten it. But we're just trying to find a couple of leads. Maybe they don't have family. So I can find it with the coworkers. Maybe I ask what they do for fun. I can find it there. But I just found out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people. Do you know how much money that is in presentations? That's seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred dollars in presentations. That probably about four of them that I can help out and protect four families, and we know how much we make when we protect a family. So that could have cost me four families protected if I think you're good at that. And it, because they know, they know, basically, um, the person, then it's an easier sell because you already have that trust build up. And I'll, we'll work on how to set that up in a second. Okay. So that's how we do this. We got to get good at that, right? Now let's, get, now let's get rid of the think about it. Okay. Now, Eric, this is not something you can buy. You need to be approved for it. Now, if you see a need for it, like most people do, then today we're going to help you put in a request for approval. Okay, the insurance company is going to give us an answer in about three to seven days. Then if approved, you'll have 30 days to adjust your policy up or down. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, so get good at this one. This is really important. So you don't have people going, "Ah, I need to think about it. Right. All right. Now, Eric. This is not something we can buy. Okay, we need to be approved for it. Now, if you see a need for it, like most applicants do then today we'll help you put a request in for approval. The insurance company is going to give us an answer about three to seven days. And then if approved, you'll have 30 days to adjust your policy up or down. Is that making sense? Yes. Okay. Now, if we don't find a plan today, usually it's budget. So just let me know. We can keep adjusting it. But I need your help on let me know, you know, what you can afford monthly. Okay. Now, if you don't want a policy, that's okay too. Just let me know. We'll close your case. We don't need to do a second appointment since we shop every carrier nationwide and we won't know if you're approved until we apply. Okay. So any questions or concerns on that? No. Okay. Now, when you find a plan that works for you, the insurance company is going to ask for three things, a driver's license check, criminal background, a social check, prescription records, and a bank account to obviously pay for the policy if approved. Any questions or concerns on this? No. Okay. Okay. Now, I used to say a bank account to check for fraud. I don't say that anymore. I just like to keep it simple. A bank account to obviously pay, pay for the policy, you know, if you get approved. And if they go, well, why do we need a bank account? Well, I'm not giving you a bank account. I'm going to say just very simply, okay, they also don't give out policies for free. How are you going to pay for it? I guess I'm confused. You know, how are you going to pay for it, right? 
what do you mean you're not going to give a bank account? You want the insurance company to give you just $200,000 for free? It's insurance. Is your car insurance free? How do you pay for that? Right? So just make it obvious. Like, yeah, you need a bank account. Duh. <laughs> How are you going to pay for it, you silly goose? Right? Now, if you don't get approved for it, then, you know, obviously, um, you know, then they're not going to charge you. But again, we're picking out a plan today. Right. I don't need to do a second appointment since we're shopping every carrier nationwide. Right. You know, and we're not going to know if you're approved until we apply. So any questions or concerns on that. Right. All right. Now, what's your max? Now, you can some if you want to use this line, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. You know, there's a lot of agents that are so confident with their script. They can just pitch a three hundred dollar premium and people eat it up all day. But, you know, is that person going to cancel it later? Yeah, I don't know. Right. So we can do something with this one and we can try to figure out what their budget is and make sure it's something they can afford right now. What am I doing? I'm getting rid of the objection later down the road of them going, yeah, I need to think on this because I can't afford it. I'm asking them straight up, right? Now, what's your max budget you can invest monthly to protect um, Chelsea with, okay? I want to make sure we give you options under that. Yeah, it's probably right around 150 bucks that I'd be comfortable with monthly. Okay, so all the options, basically 150 and below is what we're kind of looking for? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just want this to be in your budget because we don't want to let this go down the road because it's going to get more expensive as we get older. You know, we always want to make sure your family's protected. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. Now, you can see when I was reading that, you can even rewind that on YouTube, but I wasn't reading it word for word. Sometimes I read it this way. Sometimes I read it different. Why can I do that? Because I have it memorized in my head. I have the general scope of it, right? I'm just looking at keywords and making sure I stay on track. So it sounds natural. Now, what, now what's your maximum budget? You know, and then just so I know, Eric, you know, what's your maximum budget monthly that you can protect Chelsea with? You know, I just want to make sure we give you options under that. Yeah, about 150 a month. I 150. Yeah, I just want to make sure that, you know, we keep this in your budget. We don't let this go down the road because it's just going to get more expensive as you get older. Obviously, you know, we want to make sure your family is protected no matter what. Is that making sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I like that better, obviously. You like that line? Obviously, we want to make sure. <laughs> obviously, yeah. we we want to make sure your family's protected no matter what. Actually, you can say always, whatever you want to say. Always, whatever. But you get the point of it. So as you're practicing this thing, it's always, we, obviously we want to make sure your family is always protected. Is that making sense? Yeah, that makes sense. All right, perfect. Then you fill out the needs analysis form, which is what we call the medical form, or they call it the what financial inventory form. Okay. You give some options, right? And then you're always quiet. So I always do this. All right. So we got we got two options here for you. Or you can give one. Sometimes you can just give one option. All right. So the first option I have is just at your max budget. Um, let me know what you think of it. But uh, basically for 150. I can give you three years of income protection. So that's basically gonna replace that $70,000 for your family for three years. And that's gonna last for a full 30 years. So you're gonna be protected for 30 years. If anything happens, your family's gonna be okay. And that income's replaced for three years, which is gonna be a total of 210,000. And that comes to 150. Okay. Yeah, I like that one. Okay. Now this is really important to be quiet. So after you say it, sometimes it might be five, 10 minutes, okay? It's kind of awkward, right? Because you are you feel like it's weird that it's quiet, but in their head, it's not. They're just, they're constantly thinking. So just, just don't talk. Be the last person to talk. Just sometimes it might be 10 minutes, kind of weird. We're like, um, just give them time. Um, yeah, I, need, I might need to think on it. Oh, and every time they say that, you're like, I'm guessing it's the, the budget, right? You're not sure if 150 could afford it? Yeah, okay. Well, let's look at the next plan. For $100 invested in your family a month, 
we're going to be able to replace your income for that family for two years. So when you die, they're going to have two years to get back on their feet. How's that one looking? But then quiet, right? Quiet, be quiet. Okay. Let them say either I want to think on it or let, or fill out the app or say, let's go. And then every time they say something like, okay, like I said, you pick the plan that fits your budget. I'm guessing it's still too expensive because we already went over earlier. You had said that they're going to be in a tough spot without this. So you're saying $100 is too much to invest monthly in your family. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. All right. Well, we can start off with a $50 policy, and that's going to replace the income for one year. Okay, is that more in the budget? Yeah, that's probably more doable for me. Okay, we can start there. And then, like I said, you know, you have 30 days to adjust your policy up or down. So if you do want to raise it, make sure it's in 30 days. Does that sound fair? Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Now, needs analysis. Oh, wait, sorry, stop cancels. So we want to make sure we're doing this every single time. If you don't do it, you're, you're literally shooting yourself in the foot. You're, my cancellations went down to 10%. If I don't do it, that's 30%. That's all, right? So, hey, um, so I just submitted that. We're going to wait for a response. Either they're going to say we have to wait three to seven days or in a very rare case, you know, they'll say we're approved already, which is kind of cool. So while I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, text you over. i um, required to read you this protection notice. And I'm also going to text you my contact. Okay. Now open up that. Let me know you received those. Did you get my contact? All right, great. Open that up right now, my contact, and save that. Because I'm going to basically be your agent forever. Anything you ever need, you're going to give me a call. And I want to make sure you have my number saved in your phone. So let me know when that's done. So make them do it right then and there so they save it. Okay. All right. And then I'm required to read, read you this protection notice. Okay. Okay, so then we go down to this. We text this over. Have this saved in your notes somewhere. Insurance protection notice. If any sales rep or agent from another company suggests you cancel, replace, cash in, or discontinue your life insurance policy, please be very cautious, cautious of any future replacement attempt. What to look for? On the phone, the agent tells you their supervisor or manager needs to check the work for review. No one will call you services policy except for the licensed medical field owner who gave you this form. So you want to sound like you're reading this on this one. So like, it's okay to sound like you're reading it because you want to feel like it's your required to read it, right? So you kind of want to sound scripted on this part. Um, okay, so on that first part, what it means is the only person that's going to call you is me to service this plan. So if you get anyone that calls you and goes, they're connected with me, know that that's not true, okay? The only person that might call you is my assistant, Valerie, but she's going to say, hey, this is Ryan Reynolds' assistant, okay? But just know that I'm the only person calling. Does that make sense, Eric? Yeah, that does. All right. Agent tells you they should cancel your policy and go with their company for a lower premium. That's not possible because we're national brokers. So if they say that it's lower, it's not the same policy. Maybe it doesn't have the living benefits. Okay. Maybe it goes for 20 years. Maybe it's an accidental, but something's off because I ran the search through all of the carriers nationwide. So if you're getting something lower, make sure you give me a call because it's not the same policy. And my job is to make sure you're in the best position possible. Does that make sense, Eric? Yes. Okay. Agent tells you they're from a lender or bank and can offer you a better deal. That's not possible. Lenders do lending, not insurance. Okay. Always ask for the insurance uh, agent's life insurance license, and they should provide you that during the appointment. That's when we check you when we text the credentials over. Okay. You can always confirm us with the Department of Insurance. Just Google, look up licensed insurance agent in your state, and type in their state license and or national producer number. Okay. While replacement can be beneficial, there's many reasons that cancellation and replacement may not be in your best interest. And you need to have all the facts. This notice is for your awareness. Okay, so any questions or concerns on that, Eric? No, that makes sense. Okay. Well, I just wanted to say I, this just popped up. Um, it looks like you actually did get approved. This only happens about 10% of the time. So you must actually have a pretty clean medical record. So you actually came back as prefer preferred. I want to say congrats. You know, you're a member of Family First Life now, and uh, we specialize in so much stuff. So you got my number saved, right? Yes. Okay. So you can call me and do a needs analysis anytime you want, but we specialize in debt reduction. You know, I had a lady the other day that she had, a, uh, she had $400 in debt payments 
uh, for our credit card and actually college debt. And uh, we were actually able to reduce that down to a hundred bucks. So pretty cool. We specialize in life insurance, final expense, mortgage protection, retirement planning, and guaranteed income. This is basically like a policy making sure you don't run out of retirement money, like with an annuity. So we do all those things and you can utilize us anytime you want, which is pretty cool. Um, we also do free needs analysis for your friends and family. You know, if we can help them, great. If not, great. But just a free service that we do for our members just to make sure that the people they love are in the best position possible, okay? So what was your first sister's name? Sarah. Sarah, and then what's her number? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then what was your second sister's name? Leah. Leah, and then what's her number? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Gotcha, and then I know you mentioned your brother too. What was his name so we can make sure he gets that free needs analysis? His name's Chris. Chris. Okay, cool. And what was his number? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Gotcha. And then I know your mom and dad are still alive too. So let's make sure they, they're in the program as well. Uh, what was your mom's name? Janet. Janet. Okay. And then what's your phone number? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Okay. And then uh, what's your uh, dad's name? His name is Tom. Tom, okay. And what's his number? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Gotcha. And then Derek. Derek, uh, I'll have to look his number up. I'm not sure. Okay. We'll I'll hold that up. That number. Yeah. Oh, you want to text to me? And then uh, also, let's get Mike in there too, just since he qualifies for it too. What's his oh, number? Yeah. yeah, Mike's is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Well, um, you can do it two ways. I mean, whichever way you want to do it. Um, we can either shoot him a group, a group uh, text message with my number since you have it saved and say, this is Ryan, you qualify for a needs analysis. So just give me a heads up. Or um, I can just give him a call and say, Hey, I just helped out, you know, Eric with a, with a policy and he gave you this gift of, uh, you know, the free needs analysis and just get him scheduled. Uh, which one did you prefer? Yeah, I think they would all uh, respond more to uh, group text. I think that's the best okay. way to do it. And, you know, on that stuff, guys, I mean, I guess I wouldn't probably ask it. I would just pick one and tell them which one to do. Um, I personally haven't been saying anything, and I just call the person up. And sometimes I'll call three times and go, hey, I just helped out. You know, Eric, um, he actually gave you this free needs analysis. We just got him a, a free policy. And you basically just use this script. It's right here. Hey, so I just stepped out Eric with some protection and uh, he's a member now of our company, Family First Life. And uh, Eric basically gifted you uh, with a free needs analysis that we do for our members, you know, friends and family. We specialize in debt reduction, life insurance, final expense, mortgage protection, retirement planning and guaranteed income. You know, it's all free information. So if we can help you, great. If not, great. But it's a free service we do for our members, friends and family. And uh, Eric just wanted to make sure that the people he loves are is in kind of the best position possible. So uh, what time do you get off work? Yeah, I'm usually off around five. Around five. Okay. Let me just check real quick and see what we got open today. Um, it looks like I have a six and a seven available. Uh, what time works for you? Yeah, we'll do the, uh, the seven should work. Okay. Is there any reason why you wouldn't be able to answer the phone at, at seven? Like maybe overtime or at work? No, seven o'clock, I should be available. Okay, you don't stop at the grocery store or have any plans you forgot about today? Uh, no, not today. Cool, cool. All right, well, just expect to, to receive a call. Um, I'll try to get you right at seven. You know, it could be between seven, seven thirty ish, you know, just in case the previous family, you know, went a little bit longer. Okay. Okay. All right, perfect. And then, um, you know, are you married by chance? Are you single or married? Yeah, I'm married. Married? Okay. Um, your spouse is required to be there as well. Um, can can uh, she make that time? Yeah, she'll be home then too. Okay. Can you go ahead and uh, tell her about the appointment when we're done here just so she knows to be there? Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Okay. Um, we're almost done here. Should you grab a, a pen for the security code? Uh, let me know when you're ready. All right. I'm ready. All right. Awesome. So that code is 7W52. Um, the date is going to be August 12th. So August 12th. Okay. And then um, 
So that's going to be obviously on Friday. And then write down my name on the medical field under I assigned you. It's Ryan Reynolds. Let's write down Ryan Reynolds. And then uh, my license number is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then uh, my cell number, just so you have it, so you know it's me when I call, it's 480-330-9573. Okay. And then again, just expect me to get a call around, uh, receive a call around like 7, 7.30ish. Okay. Now, Eric, can you just go ahead and read that back to me just to make sure we have it right? Yeah, the phone number is 480-330-9573, security code 7W52 on 8-12-2022. Nice. And then would you have my license number? Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And then did you have uh, my name? Ryan Reynolds. Perfect. All right. And then do you have that, you have that security code written down, right? Yeah. Okay. Just make sure you put it in a safe spot because we'll need it for the appointment. Um, that's how we, you know, use it for security. You know, if we don't have that, we won't be able to proceed without it. Okay. So, um, and then just real quick, how do you remember your appointments? I put them in my Google calendar. Cool. Can you do that for me now? Yeah. Cool. Just let me know whenever you're done. All right. I got it. Cool. All right. Well, hey, I'll go ahead and text you my credentials um, after this call. Um, we're looking forward to working with you and helping your family today at 7, 730-ish. Give you that information that you qualified for, and then we'll kind of go from there. Okay. So a lot of this tie downs right here, if you want to skip some of it, if it's same day, you can. It's kind of lengthy if it's like booked in the afternoon, but definitely anytime you're booking an appointment the next day, you need to do every single one of these steps to prevent your no-shows, okay? Make a big deal out of the security code. They will use that security code. We won't be able to proceed without it, right? And if we look up here, when I'm talking about a booked appointment, I use that. I go, hey, um, so if you have a set appointment, I ask. All right. Hey, so this is Ryan Reynolds. I'm actually signing you for that needs analysis today. Um, just need that security code. Do you guys have that? I need that to proceed. Okay. Yeah, I do have it. Okay. What is that? 7W52. And what did I do? I just reversed it. They're not, now they can't go, I don't trust you, Ryan. I'm like, well, I don't know if I can trust you. <laughs> so they're, you know what I mean? So I'm reversing it with that security code, right? So that works really well. Now they're not thinking anything about trust. They're like, whoa, this person is not even sure. What, what that says psychologically is I don't, I can't even proceed without the secure code. Yeah. And, and if that's true, then obviously I don't care about making a sale. Right. Does that make sense, Eric? Yeah, it does. So that, that would really kind of like take away that trust factor. And you can still say, you know, okay, great. Well, um, grab a pen and paper. I'm going to go ahead and text you my credentials. You know, just let me know when you're ready. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. There's another way. Now, Mike Curry, he, he does a nice simple one. I've never read this before, but we'll try to, I just typed it up. So if you're booking the same day one, you might do that same opening you know, that you're reading right here for booking the appointment. So, hey, I just helped out Eric with some protection. You know, he's actually a member of our company, Family First Life now. And it looks like Eric gifted you um, with a free needs analysis that we actually do for our friends and family, uh, for our members, friends and family, okay? So we specialize in debt reduction, life insurance, blah, 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 blah. But it's just a free service we do for our members, you know, friends and family. And, and it looks like Eric wanted to make sure that the people he loves are in the best position possible. Um, you know, I'm a manager here at the Benefit Center. I was just giving you a call back because Eric asked me to. Um, and they just need me to run through this real quick for you. It takes about 15, 20 minutes. Um, I can't do it right now because we're super busy um, this morning. But when do you get off work this afternoon? Yeah, I'll be off probably around 6 today. Got it. Okay. And then are you single or married? I'm single. All right, cool. So um, I don't have anything right at that time, but it looks like I do have a, a seven or eight open still. Um, which time works for you? Um, probably the eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Okay. Well, just pencil me in for that eight o'clock. Um, this is my phone number. 
Um, it's my personal line. So um, I'll, this is the one I'll be giving you a call back on. Um, just want to make sure you're sitting somewhere where you have a pen and paper handy. So, you know, so we can, so then we'll just kind of knock it out. Okay. I guess I typed that in wrong. Knock it out. All right, perfect. And then um, we'll, we'll see you then. You hang up and you just text them over your credentials. Okay. So you can see that I'm able to look at this. I've just typed this up this morning. I'm able to look at keywords and just kind of make it work because I've done this for so long. I've practiced, right? So I want you guys to go practice this thing. Start saying everything without looking at it. That way you can, you have it in your head memorized. You can keep, pick up keywords, change up your words, your paragraphs around, you know, switch it up. Okay. Um, so this is the entire script. Everything you possibly need is right here. If you're in the middle of an appointment, you need to set it, right? If you need to just set one for the heck of it, you know, because you're setting appointments, maybe you're setting afternoon appointments. You can either use this one or you can use this one, either one. This is the one I like to use. Make sure there's no one-leggers, but, you know, it's really up to you. All right. So any questions or concerns on that? No. Anybody? Well, that was All right, guys. Nice. Well, that's the new updated Simple Rush Freestyle um, that will constantly be updated. So keep coming back to the website once a week. And uh, there's just going to be always changes making this thing better and better. So um, that's the update for now. And then the next one will probably be released in about a month and it's be even better from there.